All right, everybody, today we're gonna do a drone review video. Everyone keeps asking me what drone I use. It is the DJI Spark. It's the only drone I've ever had, and it's very user-friendly. I recommend it to beginners. So what I'm gonna do is go some of the basic features of it. I'm not gonna to get too technical, so let's go ahead and get started. Right off the bat, let's talk about cost. The Spark has been out since 2017, and on the used market, as you can see right here, they go from anywhere between 250 to in the upper 350s. Um, they come with or without a control. The controller is actually about 100 or less these days. I think the controller is very critical to flying the drone. You can fly it with your phone to begin with, but I wanted to learn how to fly a drone, like a real drone, and just not like with the phone. So. So after you get everything set up as far as agreeing to everything that DJI wants you to agree to, get the batteries charged, um, right on the bottom of the, the, the drone, you're gonna see a code there. And you're gonna have to use this code, either scan the QR code, or you can go ahead and pull off the Wi-Fi code right there. Mine's kinda smudged a little bit, I don't know how, but you're gonna need that to get initially started with this. Once you got the battery in there, go ahead and tap it once just to see how much battery you got. This one's fully charged. You pop open there, you can put an SD card in there and there's the charging port for it. You have to have the battery connected to charge this drone. Oh. So I've had the drone for about eight months, maybe nine, and the wings, as you can see, have taken a lot of damage, including the gimbal and the sensor up there. Let's go ahead and get these wings replaced before we take off. If you get into a lot of crashes like I did initially not knowing what I was doing, I recommend that you purchase a pack of these, what are they, NB Spark Propellers. They're about 13 bucks shipped. Um, I've already flown with them and they fly very well, so I think DJI wants about maybe 50 for them. So you be the judge on that. To be honest, I crashed this thing a lot when I first got it like more than I should have. I should have read instructions or something or watched videos. So I recommend getting this set because it has two packs in there. So if you start off and crash everything up, you can repair it. All you do is push down and twist and pull up. Same way to put them on. There we go, they're all done. Um, one thing I wanted to point out that if you look, the ones that have the circles on the propellers have to be on opposite sides and the ones that don't have to be on the other side. So just kind of look at that before you put the propellers on because it'll fly crazy if you don't. Here's the controller, which is very essential to learning how to fly a drone if you ask me. Right there, that's how you would charge the controller with the included cables. I'm gonna demonstrate how to set the controller and the drone up all by Wi-Fi. Flip the controller around and you'll see a code there. You will have to enter this code in your phone in the Wi-Fi area. Not in the Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi, because I always check the Bluetooth sometimes when I do this. After you install the DJI app, it'll look a little something like this upon first activation. It's gonna wanna pull up your camera to scan the code on the box or again, underneath the drone. So go ahead and do that. The phone's gonna want permission to access the camera, which is essential to viewing the live playback when you're flying. Once you have all of that set up, moving forward from here, you would just turn on the controller, pair it with your phone by Wi-Fi, and then turn on the drone like I'm doing right now, and everything will connect from that point moving forward. Out in the field, it literally takes me less than five minutes to get this thing up in the air. Um, so again, I recommend the controller. This is how you turn it on. You turn it on just by holding the button for a second and then pressing it again, just like you turn the drone on. See, it shows you how much battery you have by one press. And then if we wait here for a second, that red light flashing is gonna go green and the drone lights are gonna stop flashing and it lets you know that you're ready to fly. But there we go. See the lights stop flashing? All right, let's get this thing in the air. Always check and update your firmware before you take off because um, the thing might do something weird if you don't do it. I've, I've been there already. Once you got the go fly there, as you see, you are all set. It's gonna pull your GPS and you're in the air. It's gonna tell you right off the bat that your Wi-Fi password is weak, so I'd recommend changing that. Um, all these settings that you see right here 
or default settings and I wouldn't recommend messing with them as a beginner. Um, there's also a mode called tripod mode, which will let you fly this thing really slowly. So for, for a beginner, you get like kind of like training wheels and for an advanced user, it allows you to get cinematic shots. Um, don't put it in sport mode and we'll speak on that later. Okay, how I like to get it up, you just press the two left sticks down into the lower sides and it'll get it spinning. So once you got it spinning, everything looks good on the screen. You wanna go ahead and just hit up on the left thumbstick and we'll take it off. Here's a quick idea of how it sounds. So it's not the quietest drone by any means, but once you get it way up in the air, no one can hear it. All right, it's up. So let me show you what it looks like on the screen. So right now the drone is in the air and this is what it would look like. Again, there's a cable that you can use so you don't have to use a Wi-Fi connection to the controller. You move the thumbstick left, it goes left. You move it right, it goes right. And as you can tell, I'm barely pressing on the thumbstick. So it's probably because of the settings I had that day, but it's extremely sensitive if you don't have it set up properly. This is the gimbal wheel, it lets you look up and down this gimbal only goes up and down it doesn't go side to side so let me give you an example of that so now we're looking directly down on me and back up into the air it's very useful and fun that's the record button on the left side that's the picture button on the other side so let's go ahead and get this thing down i didn't really fly it that much i just wanted to get in the air so you could see how that works and landing it is pretty much the same thing. You're just gonna hold down on the stick. Hold it down, it's gonna start beeping. Don't land it in the snow by any means. Yeah, not the best idea. There's a sensor on the bottom of that thing too, so do not try this at home. Ah. Next, I'm gonna show you how gesture mode works. You put the drone in your hand you double click the button twice on the back, it's gonna beep, things turn green, and it's off. So you're basically controlling it with your palm up. It's recognizing your palm essentially. So you gotta move rather slowly as you can see. Um, it goes up, it goes down. You can also take pictures with gestures as well by putting your hand in the picture frame um, gesture and it'll snap a picture of you. I don't use this very much um, But it's it's pretty cool a lot of people bought it for this reason but Being able to do this with or without a controller is is a, is a is a benefit. It looks cool at least but I would probably never really Control the drone like this Out in the field doing a vlog or trying to get some quick shots. It just wouldn't be practical for me Putting your hand underneath the drone will make it land I thought that was a pretty cool feature. It's kind of weird, but you know, it works. So that's really it. I just wanted to give you guys a non-technical review of this thing. This drone is for the everyday user. Um, again, do not accidentally cut on sport mode on the remote. If you put your drone in sport mode, please be cautious. In video mode, it only records 1080p 30 frames per second. I wish it recorded 60 frames per second so we can do some better slow-mo. Um, here are the two cables I was telling you that you can get to connected to the controller. So if you don't want to spend a lot, you just want something that's really quick and get it up and take some good shots and keep moving, I recommend the Spark. So I didn't want to put you guys to sleep, so that's why I put all the technical stuff in the little white text. Um, that's all I got for this video. I told you guys I'd make this video, so go ahead and like, subscribe, and um, peace out guys. Drone video still coming too, I promise. I need to make a drone video one of these days. We're looking for the controller to the drone, huh? And I think that we should get the drone up. I mean, you got a drone, you gotta fly that thing, right? 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 It's probably in your uh, backpack. You think so? I think so. Oh! What the hell was that? I'm freaking out. I'm like, uh. Ooh, he was right.
He was right. I think I'm gonna make a drone video on the little spark I'm always flying. So if you want me to make a drone video, go ahead and say, I want you to make a drone video. So no drone action, you okay with that? Yeah.